That's right. Fox 59 continues to analyze the court documents revealed this week that led to Richard Allen being arrested for the Delphi murders. And we've learned that a simple clerical error early in the case led to Allen being lost in the shuffle. Yeah, he was interviewed shortly after the bodies of Libby and Abby were found in 2017. Russ McQuaid has been analyzing some of the evidence found in the documents and piecing together the next steps of this investigation. And Russ, as we come to you here and before we go to your piece, really we've had a lot of developments just within the last half hour here about this case. Some new information from the suspect's attorney as well just within the last 30 minutes. And that's what makes this case, it's a dynamic case, it's living, it's breathing, it changes all the time. Literally, as we're finding out in the last half hour, it changes minute by minute. First, Dan, as you mentioned, the fact that a, now a hearing date has been set for a gag order, which would preclude anybody, prosecutor, investigators, maybe even witnesses and certainly defense attorneys from speaking out about this case. It just so happens in the last day or so, I've been in touch with Andrew Baldwin, and he is one of the attorneys representing uh, Richard Allen, and we've been involved in negotiations yesterday and today to set up an interview with the attorneys. We thought that was going to happen today. Instead, what we received is we have just received this statement from Andrew Baldwin, an attorney representing um, Richard Allen. And statement too. It, it's yeah, quite lengthy. Yeah. It's about two, three pages. And what it does is it indicates, first of all, that no one contacted Richard Allen during the five years that this case has been investigated up until October of this year. He says also, Rick Allen went voluntarily to what he's calling a conservation officer. We understand that to be a DNR officer. Um, in the opening days of the investigation outside of a grocery store in Delphi and said, hey, I want you to know I was there that day, I'm helping out, I didn't see anything. That tip, you're going to see in my piece here in a minute, is the crux of what we're talking about. Where was that tip? Where did it physically exist in a file for five years that nobody found it? In the upcoming piece, you will see some of that information. He also says, the attorney says, Rick volunteered that he did not uh, get rid of his vehicle, his guns, he didn't throw out his clothing over the past five years, which a guilty person would do. He didn't do that. He also says that uh, we challenge the uh, bullet identification technology that is key to the probable cause. He also says there is uh, no mention, or there was no mention in the probable cause about a second suspect, even though investigators have said so. So this is an outstanding, uh, amazing statement that has come from the yeah. attorneys representing Richard Allen, and uh, we're the only ones that have it at this hour, so that's why we're getting the first look at that. This probable cause affidavit with names redacted gives us the best view into the investigations and the investigator's case against Richard Allen, but it raises many more questions. There are gaps that I've been trying to fill all day long. Richard Allen reached out to a non-traditional law enforcement officer in the days after the killings to admit he was on the Monon High Bridge the day Abby and Libby were killed. Page four of the PC reads, quote, investigators reviewing prior tips encountered a tip narrative from an officer who interviewed Richard Allen in 2017. This is the tip narrative that was buried in the file for more than five years until someone recently brought it to the attention of investigators. In the days before an October 13th search warrant was conducted at Allen's house, where detectives say they found a 40 caliber pistol linked to a bullet discovered at the murder scene. The day the search warrant was served at his house is when Allen admitted going to the bridge on February 13, 2017 to, quote, watch the fish. Investigators say Richard Allen is the man on the bridge, captured during 47 seconds of video on Libby's cell phone. But we've only seen two seconds of this very fuzzy image shot from a distance and heard the man's voice and been told one of the girls said the word gun as the man approached. Allen's arrest came right after sources indicate prosecutors were seriously considering Kagan Klein, the man they say was arranging to meet Libby on the bridge the day she died with the murders. Carroll County Prosecutor Nicholas McLeland said in court last week that investigators think someone else was involved in the killings. Klein is the only living person linked to the case. Though investigators have never explained who is depicted in this second witness sketch, which bears no resemblance to the first Indiana State Police suspect sketch.
We are still missing two key pieces of documentation. The autopsy reports, which could indicate what role, if any, a firearm played in the deaths of the girls, and might explain how an unspent bullet ended up on the ground, and the search warrant that was served at Richard Allen's house, where investigators would have needed to convince a judge why they thought a specific gun related to that bullet would be found there. Both documents are sealed. However, it's worth noting that Allen's attorney, Andrew Baldwin, the man who sent me this statement just in the last 15 minutes, is a co-counsel on the Caden Smith triple murder case here in Indianapolis, where the defense just convinced a judge to throw out a murder weapon discovered during a search warrant inside Smith's house. Dan? Now, Russ, a lot of developments here breaking just within the last half hour. We appreciate it. Meantime, we